BBC News with Sue Montgomery. The far-right nationalist Israeli politician Naftali Bennett says he will work with all his might towards forming a new unity government, something that would end Benjamin Netanyahu's 12 years as Prime Minister. Mr Bennett threw his support behind the centrist Yair Lapid, who has until Wednesday to form a government. Mr Netanyahu responded immediately, saying that a Lapid-Bennett government would weaken Israel. Don't form a left-wing government. Such a government is a danger to Israel's security and future. Think about it. What will it do for Israel's deterrence? How will we look in the eyes of our enemies? What will they say in Iran? What will they say in Gaza? What will they do in Iran and in Gaza? What will they say in the halls of government in Washington? Leaders of the West African grouping ECOWAS have suspended Mali's membership from the bloc following last week's military coup, the second in nine months. The coup leader and now interim president, Colonel Asimi Goita, attended the meeting in the Ghanaian capital, Accra. Thomas Nadi reports. ECOWAS regional leaders demand that a new civilian prime minister be elected. They also urged the military leaders to respect the 18-month transitional period and hold elections in February next year. Colonel Asimi Guaita staged a coup in August last year and again seized power last week after he was dissatisfied with a cabinet reshuffle that saw two members of the military stripped off their positions. Western leaders, including French President Emmanuel Macron, have raised concerns that the development could worsen instability in Mali. Officials in north-central Nigeria say many students are missing after being abducted by gunmen from a school in the town of Tajina. It's not clear how many were kidnapped, but a teacher told the BBC around 100 have been taken. Two people were shot during the attack, one died and the other is critically injured. The Texas State Senate has approved a voting bill that's been widely seen as discriminatory to people of colour. Brenda Marshall has more details. Measures in the bill would make postal voting harder, make the removal of disruptive poll watchers more difficult, ban popular practices such as drive through voting and restrict voting hours. It would also lower the legal standard for overturning an election result. The Republican-majority House is due to take up the measure later today, and if it passes, the Texas state governor is expected to sign it quickly. President Biden has described it as un-American and an assault on democracy. The bill comes in the wake of former President Trump's false claims of election fraud and is similar to legislation recently adopted in Georgia and Florida. World News from the BBC. Police in the Indian capital, Delhi, have arrested more than 350 suspected fraudsters for selling fake medical supplies to COVID patients. Having opened hundreds of investigations, police found that many families fell victim to con men, offering counterfeit drugs and oxygen and social media. A senior officer, Prem Nat, said the offences were a new low. You can consider this as a crime against humanity. People are suffering they are asking you to deliver something to save their life and you are cheating them. It's uh, very painful to see this situation. King Philippe of Spain has received his first dose of a COVID-19 vaccine. The 53-year-old was invited for his appointment at the same time as other Madrid residents in his age group. Here's Daniel Wittenberg. King Felipe was vaccinated at a basketball arena in Madrid that had been out of action at the peak of the pandemic, but has since bounced back as a vaccination centre. No photographs have been published, nor was it revealed which make of the vaccine the king was given. But the royal household did point out that the monarch hadn't jumped the queue for a jab. His sisters, Infantas Elena and Cristina, had been criticised for procuring their vaccines in Abu Dhabi while visiting their father, the former king Juan Carlos. Voters in Croatia's capital Zagreb have elected a new mayor in a watershed runoff election in which neither of the country's mainstream parties was represented. The victor, a Green Left candidate, Tomislav Tomasevich, took two thirds of the vote. He described his victory as a mandate for real change. The Colombian cyclist Igan Bernal has won the Giro d'Italia, 89 seconds ahead of Italy's Damiano Caruso. Ineos Grenadiers Bernal, a climb specialist who grew up in the Andes, was elated at his victory after a disappointing 2020 Tour de France. BBC News.